Welcome to the Horse Isle 3 Infinite Wilds pre-beta tour. We're sorry it's been a while since our last video, but we've really been hard at work and some smaller details just took lots of time. That said, let's give uh, a tour for, for beta hopefully coming up pretty soon so you guys kind of have an idea how stuff works. And here we go. So we've got a nice view of a an atoll. It's a nice tropical old volcano style biome. And Chris's fellow developer Chris here is standing out with his nice looking horse donut. So he's got some nice nice gray patterns going on there. Let's see we've got some decent tack going now and, and The horse has come quite a ways. Got some dark eyes there. So again, that horse is 100%, 100% genetically generated. So every every feature about him is unique and his own his own stuff. So I can go in here and go to my horses, pull out my Rose horse. It's, she's got quite a bit different look going on. Chris, you don't happen to have any blue-eyed horses, do you? Those are those really show off the eyes. It probably doesn't, but just check. Right, get back on this horse. First person view here. It's another nice looking horse. It's a big, big poofy mane. Why don't you get on that thing, Chris, and let's see what, I, what the riding looks like now. The player sits in the saddle pretty cleanly and a good western grip. And there he's running off through the through the palm trees. You can probably faintly hear some uh, hoof steps. And even if you if you tire a horse out, you can hear the breathing. Turn that volume down a little bit yet, but it's it's a pretty neat effect. As he's tired, the chest there heaves more and less as he gets less tired. That's pretty neat. Now you can't hear the breathing as much either. So we've tried to make the game a little bit more user friendly. So at the beginning, there's there's a beginner mode. We have some tips at the bottom. They'll keep going by every minute, different tip. Um, the different things on the interface will pop up a little little tool tip there. That talks with the mini map and how if you if you click on it you can get different zoom modes. So you can see I'm on an atoll but there's actually two others nearby if I was to, to go for a swim. Um, we've got our different currencies, our mobia, dust, and our essence. And a whole bunch of different stats. Energy and travel is player based. The rest of these are, are your horse. So my current hunger level, my thirst. My horse is a little thirsty, so I can bring it to water. Uh, how tired the horse is. Horse's health, groom, mood. It's current courage. Courage, sometimes the horse gets afraid of things. And, and if that's down, if that goes down to zero, it'll actually stop moving and just have, he's just had too much at that point.
I've also worked on some new obstacle course. Obstacles. You can uh, build your own obstacle course. Curse through this together quick using our new dressage obstacles. And they're not technically dressage, it's a mixture between dressage and, and uh, raining and, and whatever else. But So we can hit try. And now the timer at the top is going to track my performance, and I'm going to go for it. So I can see the first obstacle is over here, and it's a, a 180 turn. So I get on it and have a little dinging progression there. Whoops, I turned too far. So I get back off that. And the next obstacle here is a walk. You have to walk right through the center. This next one's a halt. I have to stop on it. And this is a reverse. So let's get lined up and back through it. There we go. I passed that one. And then a 180, roll back. Oops, turn the right way. And I rolled too far. And then back to the exit. Whoop. So I completed that. So my time at the top was one minute and two seconds with 15 seconds of fault. So we can go to the course and see how we did if, if Chris completed that. Let's look, let's see. Oh, yeah, my score is 1 minute and 17 seconds. Chris is 1 minute and 38 seconds. So. For this moment, I'm the winner until he runs it again and, and beats that. So That's kind of fun. You can mix and match the dressage obstacles with any of the other jumps or, or, or penalties. Or, so you could have us any kind of course you want, any mixture you want. Endless possibilities there. Pretty neat. So the horses in the first two games were mostly it mostly had performance stats of agility, strength, speed. Um, we couldn't end there for this. We had to take into account the size of the horse, the leg length. Otherwise, you'd have a small, tiny pony performing the same as a, as a bigger horse. So, if I look at a horse's profile now. These are the same stats that you're used to, the agility, endurance, intelligence, speed, and strength. And through training, you can fill up the, the gray area of any horse's profile. And so um, the best horse you could ever find for, for a speed trait would be closer up into here if you've done a lot of, a lot of breeding or lucky, lucky finding speed trait. Might be able to get trained all the way up to the max there. But for this horse, only up to the end of that grade. But that is just how fast and how well trained this horse's body type is, pretty much. So these composite stats here, they are the actual determination based on the performance stats here and based upon the body structure. So for churning, this horse is kind of about a third. He's in a third of the range of, of, of the best horse's turning speed. And reversing, he's also at about a third. So if you if you trained a horse in, I think it takes some intelligence and it takes a bunch of other stuff for each of these stats, but we'll eventually have a list of those so you understand what, what goes into these. But we try to make it as realistic as possible. Stride length is, is mostly the size of the horse and the length of their legs and the length of their body. And so that determines your, your stride length. And such. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty pretty neat system. And then we've still got the personality traits, just, just like we've always had. Uh, you might also see that he is a eternal horse. And that's been done just by uh, putting on a, an infinity amulet. By doing that, it, it made the horse infertile, 
but you'll be able to keep the horse forever. So that's definitely going to be an option. And different courses and such can filter based on that. So Chris could have decided that he doesn't want you to be able to bring an eternal horse into this race. He only wants natural, natural horses or vice versa. Uh, let's look at the world a little bit more. So we could go to Swamp. So the Swamp Lands are pretty neat now. We've, we've added some uh, Turtle Rock Mountains. And then there's these trails that kind of run through the swamp. Bunch of old cypress trees and cypress stumps. And pretty neat area. What we have been working on are some puzzles and we are putting them in the world so you directly directly play them while you're in the world. And, and One of them is a turtle rock here you can see. You can tell it's a puzzle because this little information icon appears and I can look at it. Strange shell. I wonder what would happen if we matched up all the other markings. If this had a star icon, that would mean we'd already finished it. And the yellow border, meaning yellow, is, is showing it that it's a medium difficulty. A green ringed icon would mean easy and red hard. So I don't know if I'll have time to solve this quick, but point of it is to latch, match up the, uh, the little highlighted parts here. So uh, looks like this will actually have to match there because this really can't be rotated any other way. If I put it here you'd have no matching no matching tick down there possible. So right there is the only way it can go. So then this one is also that's the only way it can go. It's the only way that one can go. This one should be flipped around, maybe like that. So the rest of it is going to be figuring out the rest of these. And it can be a bit of a challenge, but it's a pretty fun puzzle. This is really similar to the sand castles that we used to have. Just a fun 3D version of those. So I'll just keep working my way around and matching them up. And eventually they would all link up, hopefully. It might be getting pretty close, so maybe we can just finish it. I went too far on that one. So, those are all matched up. up. This is not. I'm going to spin this guy all the way around. Not too far. Some stragglers here. And there we go. We got it. So you win. You win a little money. Uh, you can see now the icon changes to a star, meaning you've completed this puzzle. And these are just randomly spaced throughout the world. Get a little counter for completing them, and, and they're just a fun little, fun little bonus to find in the world. Uh, you can see my travel stat is is already used up a little bit. This was a pretty, pretty far place for me to quick travel to, and that's that's what I used to to get here. Um, Traveled to a a club, which is our our town in the in the game. And so this is Dark Fairy's little village. She's she's put together. You see a wishing well. As a member, you'll get a, a wishing coin, which you can use daily to get something random. So I just got a little bit of money there. 
Got a fun, fun clock tower now that shows you the in-game time. The gray area there meaning when it when it's dark. So the dark portion of the day is, is pretty short. It's only only 10 minutes. And we're, uh, we're pretty far away from that yet. So that clock makes a full cycle every every hour. It's a full day in the game. Let's see, we've got our vet and I don't have any horses to to heal at this point. Our horse trader. This is kind of a mini quest system where they want, uh, some outsiders want a babysitter draft horse. Just a big horse for a little kid who thinks ponies are for little kids and not good enough. Just a random little uh, job. They're pretty much gonna take any horse from you for that one. But if you happen to have a Shetland that you don't need, a haunted park is looking for Shetlands to terrify park goers. Now, I don't know why they do that, but it's, a, it's big money because it's a specific breed they're looking for, and if you had an extra one, you could, you could uh, fill that order and, and earn your money. And then the horse would be taken away. We put quite a bit of effort into the player stores. So a ranch, I'm sorry, a club will be able to have some basic services, but the players the members of that club will be the main shopkeepers. So a club will be able to place these foundations and you'll be able to come up and build your store as a, as a full club member. You'll be able to set up shop. And the members of the club will work together on, you know, whether it's anarchy and everyone lists whatever they want or whether, you know, each person speci specializing in something, you guys do whatever you want. We can look at the shop and see that uh, I'm making the probably not truthful claim that this is the best store ever. It's just be a description normally here. Um, and you're able to set a buy price and a sell price for different items in the world. If you don't want to, if you don't want to actually buy items from other players, you would just leave that as zero, and, and you wouldn't have to do that. But I can come in here, I can buy a coconut. It's gonna cost me 105 bucks. And if I had had a bunch of coconuts, I could have come in here and sold a coconut for 10 bucks. So, you can see under manage here, as the store owner, I can update that coconut pricing. I can say, actually, I, I would rather I had more coconuts, so I'm gonna raise my buy price to 80. Now, hopefully in the future, people will see that the this store is buying coconuts for, for 80 and will sell us sell me more coconuts. Uh, you could also list a horse in the store. I wanna, I wanna sell New Star here for 10,000. So now, New Star is listed. I can exit back out. And that's what the what a horse listing will look like. So, with your store set up in a uh, in a club, you are able to list whatever you might want, and then these operate 24 hours a day, whether you're online or not. So. HI2 had the the ranch stores. This is pretty neat that it it pulls all those together in one location, your club, and makes it feel more like a town. Let's see, Faye. Dark Fairy had her. Whoa, she has a much fancier store. So she's mostly concentrated on dyes and, and such, uh, which I can show you a little bit of that next. Kind of a neat system we've got. Whoa, look at those saddle pads and saddles. <laughs> so she actually dyed those items and put them in her store and they are for sale. So that's pretty neat. So 
Looks like Chris has traveled here as well. He's got another horse named Spectacular out. Brown eyed, nice looking horsey. So dyes. Dyes are pretty fun. You can make them from lots and lots of items in the world. My inventory happens to have quite a bit of random stuff, so um, I want to make a dye using, uh, let's say, four dandelions. It should make it pretty yellow. Um, and maybe, maybe a beet to make it somewhere between yellow and red. Beets are pretty strong when colored, I think, so. Uh, let's just give that a try. And let's call this recipe uh, Yellow Beets. And my caps lock was on for no reason. And there's my Yellow Beets recipe, so in the future now I can just click Craft, provided I have those items. It uh, will make more of those dyes. So that's a not a very exciting dye color. It's a really peachy looking thing. But now I can look through my inventory, and I've already got rancher jeans that are bleached. But I'm gonna I'm gonna bleach my hat. So I'm gonna take my baby frogish colored hat, bleach that. Now I have a white hat. And now I can go in and in my inventory and, and use that uh... <laughs> So this is the dye I just made. It happened to line up with a, a color. We have what 16, 17 thousand different color names in the game. so it happened to line up most closely with warm biscuits. That's a wonderful color name so. Let's use our warm biscuits and dye our cowboy hat. And now I have a warm biscuits colored cowboy hat and that's just great. <laughs> so now I can go into inventory and look through my clothing items and wear my warm biscuits cowboy hat. Look at that. Way better than a teal hat. Way, way better. So, it's a pretty neat system. Lots of room to experiment. And if you, you could totally find your own recipe that just makes a really, really neat shade that, that others might not know about. And you could actually sell that dye without even telling them what the recipe is. So, it's kind of a, kind of a neat thing where you could have a secret secret recipe. Well, that's a pretty good tour of the recent recent updates, stuff we've been working on. going on there. I've also added stuff to ranches as well. Um, I don't think there's any ranches nearby that I'll go look at. So probably save that for another time. We are rushing as much as we can to get get bait up and running. Probably gonna start off with what we'll call pre-beta, which is we'll just let in a, a few folks, whoever happens to notice that it's that it's open, and uh, work from there to get out the last kinks and stuff before we fully open up beta and let let anyone come and, and check this out. It's pretty exciting to be able to just hop on a horse and uh, go 
Go for a nice long adventure. And quick, quick travel. You can see my travel bar is pretty low up there. I've only got about a third of it left, so that'll recharge over the next eight to eight hours or, or 24 hours, and uh, then you'll be able to pop to wherever you might want to go. But for the most part, you still need to use a horse to get around. And yeah, we'll, we'll turn on that horse breathing. Actually, I've got uh, we've got settings already in here, so we'll just go in here, turn down our horse sound effects a little bit. Got all sorts of sound effects you can modify. Save those settings. And now the horse doesn't sound like he's breathing right in your ear anymore. Likewise, you can turn down the, the hoof sounds and all sorts of stuff. Also, for uh, players with slower computers in the settings there, uh, we'd really like you to try graphics quality of lowest. If you're having trouble with the game running really slow, try in lowest mode first here. Just do that and save it. And see if the game is manageable with that. If it isn't, then you can come down here and we have ugly mode right here. Um, it really, really turns down all sorts of uh, fancy effects and stuff and makes the game not quite as enjoyable, but if it allows you to, to play, then that's that's the win and that's the point of it. So you would turn that on and, and restart the game and, and hopefully it would, it would be playable for you. Well, thanks so much for watching and being patient, and hopefully we can get, get you guys in here to, to come check it out. So, thanks again.